Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I think I've got an interesting topic for us today. I brought on a special guest we've had before, Reloading Weatherby. How are you doing tonight? Good. How are you? Doing good. So I just thought this would be kind of fun to bring you on and talk about a cartridge that, you know, it really had a hot start, but it doesn't seem to be doing so well. So are you up for that tonight? Yeah. Did it really have a hot start, though? <laughs> I, I so, mean, it was... Uh, hot topic on youtube but did it really ever sell well yeah. i don't know <laughs> i'm not positive on that either so you've already saw the title so you know this is about the 6.8 western i felt like it was going to be really popular i remember making a video after i bought my 270 wsm and i made the comment i believe the 270 wsm is going to go away and because of the 6.8 western i think it's really going to be popular and I know Backfire and a few other, um, you know, YouTube channels talked about it and really spoke of it in a, in a high regard. So having said that, in 2023, I think it's two years after launch, it has not performed the greatest. And it seems to be like maybe even the 270 WSM has had a resurgence, just to a small degree. It's, I'm not saying it's wildly popular. The 270 is popular... <laughs> 270 is popular as always, and yeah. they're even talking about it getting a new twist rate. And there's talk of this SIG, and of course there's the Nossler, which that's another video, but it's not doing so well either. But I'm really wondering why. Like, it seems on paper that the 68 Western is a great cartridge, and I'm wondering why it's not doing so well. So I just thought maybe you'd have an insight or at least a good opinion. So. Austin, why do you think the 68 Western is not doing so well? Okay, I, I basically have got it down to three reasons. Number one, it came out during the pandemic. Okay. Supplies were just not available at all. Okay. People couldn't get their ammo for their 30 out six and their 270 and their seven mag and their 300 wind mag. So, how are people expected to get a brand new cartridge, right? And get ammo True. in? So it just came out at the worst time. Okay. Uh, the second reason factory ammo offerings are terrible. Okay. Maybe not terrible, but they're only from Winchester and Browning. And Winchester's not really known for high quality ammo, <laughs> at least not what I think it is. Not I could be wrong. I don't really use factory ammo, but I've always felt like Winchester's kind of your cheap. It gets the job done, ammo, right? So just to interrupt you real quick, years ago, I think it was pretty high quality, but I feel like their quality control has went downhill. I personally have had a box of PowerPoints that was fantastic, and then I got the exact same box, and it was terrible. So I don't think the consistency is very good at all. Okay. When I think of Winchester ammo, I think of like Winchester XP, and it just kind of seems cheap, which is good, right? You get cheap ammo but i don't know if it's known for its precision accuracy and precision ammo that the 68 western needs so why is winchester and browning the only one making ammo for it i think a part of it has had to do with the pandemic nosler federal um others just were like hey we don't have time to make ammo for a brand new cartridge we're struggling to make <laughs> new stuff for 30 out 6 and 270 and 308 but, and then Hornady has decided to just neglect the 6.8 Western, just say, forget it. In fact, we're going to try to kill it off with a 7 millimeter PRC, which I think will happen, unfortunately. Uh, so, I mean, let's face it, Hornady is probably the top dog right now, at least the most popular. Um, and they don't make any ammo for it. There's no 155 or 160 or 165 grain ELDX. As much as I dislike that bullet, you can just tell that Hornady wants nothing to do with the 6.8 Western because there's really no high BC bullets for 270 from Hornady. Okay, the last reason is for the reloaders. There's just not a lot of bullet options. There's a few Sierra bullets, I think, and an Acubon long range from Nosler. And then a really crappy copper impact. <laughs> and uh, that's about it. But Barnes is making a 155 LRX, so that's good. 
But those are basically the three reasons. Makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, the copper impacts are not very good. I had those in the 270 WSM. Um, so back to your second point, um, you know, I feel like I heard this somewhere. It's, I guess it's a rumor, but I feel like I heard that Hornady made a comment or something that they would never support the 6A Western. And I remember on a Hornady podcast episode where they talked about the 7 PRC, they were comparing it to like the 28 Nostler and a few other cartridges. And it came up and they just immediately kind of acted like it was just an, an inferior cartridge and they didn't want to talk about it. Do you think it's because they kind of copied what they were doing? So like the head height, the chamber tolerances, and the twist rate is pretty much identical on the 6A Western as it is on the Creedmoor and the PRC cartridges. Uh, you asking, you think Hornady copied Browning and Winchester or Winchester copied Browning or Winchester copied Hornady? I think w Winchester and Browning copied Hornady. Yes, I think they did. And I, do I don't you know, think maybe that made some bad, to... maybe that made some bad feelings <laughs> like, hey, you can't do that. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. It's speculation, I, don't I guess. Know. I don't really know. I don't know why Hornady, well, I do know why, but. Hornady really wants their seven millimeter PRC, and I think they feel like the six eight Western could impede sales. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. There's 175 grain Sierra tipped Game King. Mm -hmm. It's 170 grain Burger Hybrid uh, EOL, and then there is a 165 grain Acubon Long Range, which you have some experience with. But there's not a lot of options, so you're right. I mean, I'd love to see like a Terminal Ascent, a Norma Bond Strike, or something like that come out in that 150 to 170 range. So I think that'd be pretty cool. Yes. Okay, so a week ago, I came out with a video, and I called it the one cartridge to rule them all. And if you haven't watched that video yet, you might want to stop and go watch it because I'm going to spoil it. But I picked the 6.8 Western, probably shocked a lot of people. <laughs> and I, ex <laughs> I explained why in the video that I picked it. Not that I'm going to go buy one, but if I started over and had no cartridges whatsoever, I made the comment I'd probably get a Model 70 stainless steel in a 6.8 Western, and I feel like that could do just about anything. Um, I know in, in my top three was the 7 PRC, the 6.8 Western, and the 300 WSM. So... <clears throat> I know, and I don't want to speak for you, but I know you're not the biggest fan of short mags. And I don't think you're the biggest fan of Hornady cartridges in, cartridges in general. <laughs> However, your videos are very fair. Any uh, video you've made on a short mag or a Hornady cartridge, you've been extremely fair. So do you think I absolutely made the wrong choice? Um, or, And I guess I'm, I'm getting to the point, what three cartridges would you have picked? if you were going to do the same video. Okay. Knowing you as a reloader, no. I think you made a great choice. I really like the 6.8 Western, and I'm very grateful that it kind of pushed ammo manufacturers, like bullet makers, to make higher BC bullets. I wish there was more options, as we talked about. You know, Burger, Sierra, and Nosler make some, but that's about it. Uh, but as a reloader, the 6.8 Western's really good. I've had people comment on my 6.8 Western videos that saying, yeah, I'm getting well over 3,000 feet per second with that 170 grain uh, burger bullet, which that's phenomenal performance. So, I mean, it's really right up there with the 7 millimeter PRC, almost. So, uh, if you were only going to shoot factory ammo... Yeah, I think that would be a very poor choice because <laughs> the factory ammo options are garbage yeah. <laughs> for 6.8 Western. And uh, eventually the 7mm PRC is going to have a lot of ammo options. And of course, Hornady has much better factory ammo than Winchester, in my opinion. And so if you're only going to shoot factory ammo, I think the clear choice of those three would be the 7mm PRC. But uh, can't go wrong with 300 WSM. So the three that I would pick, I okay, this is going to be a surprise because I don't really talk about this cartridge, but after the results that we're going to talk about in just a little bit, 
I'm going to go 270 Weatherby. 280 Ackley Improved. And 300 Weatherby were my three. Kind of just rounding it out. I don't see myself ever getting a 270 Weatherby. Uh, I do plan to get a 280 AI soon. Soon-ish. So. Well, the 270 Winchester has already done it. It's already went across the world um, with different gun riders and things and killed basically every game animal in the world. So it can do it for sure. And in my opinion, the 280 AI is just a step up. It's an improvement or an update of that. So pretty good choices. And then, of course, the 300 Weatherby, same thing. It's 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 done it. It's been everywhere. It's done it. So I think that's three pretty good choices. If you had to pick one clarify, of those three. Um, Sorry. You said 270 Winchester. I said 270 Weatherby. Oh, I'm sorry. I yeah, I'm not picking. Sorry, I'm not picking the 270 Winchester. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I don't love Weatherby, it that much. <laughs> the Weatherby would also be an upgrade or a step up in just velocity. So, yes, I'm, it's doing the 270 Winchester. Everything it can do, 300 feet per second faster. Of those three, which one would be your one cartridge to rule them all? Easy. 300 weather beat. Okay. Surprise, surprise, right? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah. Not a bad choice. It's just the versatility of a 30 caliber. I can shoot 100 grain all the way up to 230 grains, all with the 1 in 10 twist. All right. Speaking of versatility, the reason I picked the 6.8 Western was versatility. First of all, you can get a lot of different grain weights from like 90 to basically 180 grains because of the twist rate. Also, it's a short mag, so it has a lot of powder inside, like other short mags. So your versatility as far as distance goes, you know, you're going to have more velocity, more energy out to four or 500 yards versus like a 6.8 SPC, which is just not going to be able to do that at different ranges. So I talked about how the 6.8 Western is extremely versatile, and I gave it the edge over say the 270, 270 Weatherby, 270 WSM, because of that versatility. However, you had something happen today um, in regards to versatility. So can you talk about that? Yes. I decided to try these out. Okay. This is the 165 grain Acubon long range. And I would even go far as to say this is the premier bullet for the 6.8 Western. Would you agree? agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it has a G1BC of 0.620. Um, yeah, and it's bonded, so that's awesome. And I decided to try it out on my old-fashioned 270 Winchester with a 1 in 10 twist. Now, that can't handle it, right? It's a 1 in 10 twist. It can only go to 150 <laughs> grains. But as of, I don't know, December, November or December, when I first saw Frontline Rejects video of him shooting these bullets in his 270 WSM and saying that they shot extremely well, they were very accurate. It kind of like, whoa, maybe this is on the edge of being able to shoot with a one in 10 twist. And I think I actually, I know it can. So today I went and shot some in my 270 Winchester. I did a ladder test. Uh, I got up to... 2,811 feet per second with a 22-inch barrel. My rifle's not known to being really fast. It goes about what the books say. So, and uh, it's got me excited about shooting the 270 Winchester. I kind of put the 270 Winchester uh, away. I don't know. I, I prefer Magnums, but uh, this bonded bullet with the really high BC, uh, it really makes the 270 much more versatile. I always, I always felt the biggest gripe for a 270 Winchester was like, okay, cool, you can shoot 110 grain to 150. That's kind of limited, right? I mean, yes, they have make lighter bullets, but anyway. Now you're going to get up to a 165 grain and a 1 in 10 twist, and it's going at least 2,800 feet per second. Like I said, my rifle's kind of slow. Uh, I know some people have said they get almost 2,900 feet per second with the 165 in their 270. So that's pretty sweet. So you didn't experience any stability issues, any keyholes in your in your paper, nothing like that? Not at all. Not at all. Um, and I think the accuracy potential is there. So 
with my ladder test, I decided to shoot it into paper. Now I have a magneto speed chronograph on it. So I wasn't expecting great accuracy, but the last three shots that I did uh, were 0.65 inches. Wow. So, um, I'm planning to test those really soon, the weights uh, with Real Over 22. So as long if it's sub MOA, I think this is going to be my preferred bullet for elk hunting. Okay, so let me clarify. This is for my son. <laughs> I'm going to use a 300 weather bee for elk hunting, but it's just going to be fun. You know, it's kind of fun to to see the old 270 classic 270 Winchester shooting high BC bullets. So that's incredible. It's a game changer to me. Um, I did see Frontline Rejects video, and you guys had a like you had a video where you talked to him about it and kind of asked him a few questions. I watched him do it, and you know, I'm, I was still skeptical. Well, now mm -hmm. I've heard that you did the same thing. Um, do you think it has something to do with altitude, or do you think we just have been wrong all this time? I'm, I'm pretty confused about it, really. So, I I don't think that I think a lot of people will assume like, oh, marketing hype, they just lied to us and like the, the twist rate doesn't matter. No, it, it still does. Um, I just think this 165 Acubon long range is kind of on the border of be, okay. still being able to do it. Uh, I checked the burger website, like there's, you shouldn't be able to shoot the 170 grain with a 270 in a one in 10 twist. So I think the 165 is kind of the upper limit of the 270 Winchester. Hmm. So that, that makes me want to get some for my 270 WSM. And it also makes me want to look at all the Acubon long ranges that, you know, in all the different calibers, I've got a few other calibers. So I'm just pr pretty interested in that. It's pretty cool. Now, if that continues to be the case and everyone's having that same result, and maybe my uh, argument for versatility on the 68 Western is not quite as good. However, okay. can I say something though? In favor of the 68 Western, with it having a one and eight twist, if bullet manufacturers start making like a 180 grain, there's no way a 270 Winchester or 270 WSM is going to shoot that bullet and stabilize it. Yeah. And, and the 68 Western should. And the 68 Western will. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's pretty good information there. So anyway, I've been thinking about this 6A Western and whether it's going to succeed or whether it's going to fail is, is out of our hands. But I've been thinking of like a hashtag or something. Do you have any ideas on what a good hashtag would be? Uh, save the 6A Western. <laughs> so. Yeah, or something like that. If you guys in the comments can think of a good hashtag, let's just get that started. I really want to see this cartridge succeed. I think it's got tons of potential. But you're right. I think the seven PRC and Hornady are getting for it, so I'm not really sure. Yeah, uh, Austin, thanks for being on here. Any, any last comments or, or words or anything? Yeah, I I really do think this 165 grain in a 270 is a pretty big game changer. Um, you know, there's countless videos of a 270 versus a 65 Creed more, and you know, out to 400 yards, the 270 has that advantage. But once you get past that, the 6.5 Creedmoor high BC bullets uh, really stay with the 270 and probably outperform it eventually. That's not the case with uh, this 165 grain. So, for example, so the 165 grain has about the same BC as a 143 grain ELDX in six mil in the 6.5 Creed. Okay, and I think it's pretty safe to say you can most rifles will get 2800 feet per second in a 270 with that 165 grain and uh that's almost 2900 foot pounds of energy 65 creedmoor has only 2400 foot pounds of energy when you're hand loading it with the 143 going 2750 and again usually once you get past 350 400 yards that 65 creedmoor starts to catch up to the 270 but not the case here at 500 yards the 270 still has over 300 foot pounds more of energy with this bullet. Hmm. Really makes it extremely versatile. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. That is cool. Also makes you wonder about the at the shot show they uh, introduced the fact that the, they were going to have some fast twist rate barrels in the 270, and maybe they didn't need to do that. <laughs> I don't know. I, 
Well, Browning's going to do it, which is kind of sad. I think Browning has kind of given up on the six eight Western. There's not, yeah. they're starting to not put rifles out in the six eight Western. Of course, they still have some, but there's not as many options to get rifles in six eight Western from Browning anymore. I think they're kind of giving up on it, sadly. Hashtag save the six eight Western. <laughs> exactly. Well, Austin, I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you very much for coming on the channel. I'm sure you know his channel, but if you haven't, please go over there. It's called Reloading Weatherby. Subscribe his channel. He makes great content. And so I appreciate you coming on, and we'll just leave it there. Thanks, guys, for watching, and until next time, have a good day.